So, six in ten Americans worked a retail job at least once in their lifetimes. That's 60% of workers. One third of that, or about 32% of that 60, that was their first job. All of us have encountered Karens and Debbies and Frank Jr. and Frank Seniors. At least the majority of us have encountered them before. They made a whole subreddit called you, Karen, in honor of all the bad Karens. And all the people who have... And all the people who worked in retail and dealt with them before. Or they stepped into the wrong line at the register at the wrong time. Greetings, I'm Lady, and welcome back to LLL. Today we're going to be experiencing all the Karens, Franks, and Debbies we've encountered. Or at least I'll tell you about the ones that I've encountered. We might have honestly all experienced the same experiences before, but they get around, so I wouldn't be surprised if you did have the same exact experience. I've worked in retail before. Retail was my second job, after I've already had a job at 19 as a janitor. And I worked there for about nine months or so before I just had to leave there. Partly because of the Karens, Debbies, and Franks. As I stated, there is a whole subreddit, literally, titled F You Karen, and it does hold a lot of these situations and encounters. A Karen, by definition, courtesy of the Urban Dictionary, a Karen gives raisins to kids on Halloween, drives an SUV to carpool her kids to soccer practice, better hope the referee didn't make a wrong call, otherwise she will sue. She loves to use Snapagram to post her workout selfies. After a long day of talking to managers and driving her kids around, she sits down with her mom friends at a book club and drinks lots and lots of wine. As an example, someone would say, Oh my god, Karen, do you really have to talk to the Burger King manager every time they forget to give you a ketchup packet? LOL, yes. I have to Facebook and Instasnap it to all of my friends so that everyone knows to watch out. LOL. God, I hate Karens. And they always have that specific novelty haircut. You know, Karen. You've never seen her without this haircut. It's like novelty. There, there's no other sort of Karen. You have to have this haircut if you're Karen. What kind of hairstyle do you want? Um, I would like to speak to the manager. Say no more. Boom. Karen. They are one of the most evil moms to have, I swear. You want to be embarrassed at every single store you walk into, any sporting event you have to attend, this should be your mom. Become a child of Karen. We need a child of Karen awareness month. Never ending demands to speak to the manager anywhere she goes, anytime she breathes. You forget a ketchup packet? Can I speak to your manager? Someone's wearing the wrong shade of their own uniform at work? Can I speak to your manager? This thing was on sale two seconds ago, why isn't it on sale now? Now, can I speak to your manager? Oh. My. God. And then there's Debbie, Karen's mom. She's old, she's angry, and she hates anything to do with technology. She just doesn't get it. And her daughter Karen and her son Frank Jr. are too busy asking for the manager to teach her how to properly do the card reader at the register. Honestly, one of my biggest pet peeves are not Karen's, they're Debbie's. Frank's annoying too, but Debbie. When I was working in retail, I was working at the local Stein's Garden and Gifts, now called Stein's Garden and Home, and I still continue to call it Stein's Garden Glitter, because whenever even register people had to stock and price items, there was at least five boxes with something that was excessively glittery. You had to sweep any time you opened a box. There was glitter everywhere. Stein's Garden and Glitter. Whatever. When I worked there, one of my least favorite Karen experiences I can recall is when, I'll just call her Karen, Karen walks in and she's got her three kids already running beside her, not older than maybe 13. They all come in and I'm the only registered person on all of the lanes in the front because we had just opened. She had already been in the parking lot for about 30 minutes trying to get in before we even opened the door. Everyone else scattered, I'm the only person on register, everyone else is doing their own stuff, and here comes Karen walking up to my register 
which is awfully close to the customer service line. And she walks up and she says, Hey lady, you were the person who rung me up yesterday for this Christmas tree. The lights don't work in my tree. Tell me what is wrong with this. This tree was $1,200 and the lights don't work on my Christmas tree, lady. You better fix this. Call your guys and come up here and fix it right now or I'm getting a refund. I'm going to take my business elsewhere. Now, this was a fake tree and it was one of those trees that it was fake, it was already made, and it has LEDs built into the branches so that you didn't have to deal with tangly lights every Christmas. And somewhere along the line, I guess they didn't work and she was just demanding that we fix it right then and there. Now I had to stop her and I said to hang on a minute. She went completely off telling me, don't you tell me to hang on a minute. I want you to fix it right now. And I said, hold on, uh, Karen. I'm not the manager. Let, let me call the manager. And she shut up for only a couple of seconds and then proceeded to get on her phone with her best friend and continued to bitch about the situation. So by the time I called my manager up, I'll just call him Bill. Bill came up and asked her what the problem was. She did the same thing, but she was pointing at me the whole time like I was the problem. And then eventually it came to be that her Christmas tree just didn't have working lights. So my manager Bill called John and Bob, I should say, John and Bob and they were the technically inclined ones. So he called them up and she went to go drag the Christmas tree. Her kids just stayed in here the whole time, just staring at me the whole time. And she came in with the Christmas tree and dumped it on the floor. To then which Bill, the store manager, and the two other managers, Bob and John had then begin to assemble the tree right in the very front of the store. Because who cares if customers come in and step on it at this point if Karen was already gonna have a fit. They assembled it, they plugged it in, and she forgot a light switch to flip the switch on. It was in the tree, the manual said where it was, you just had to turn it on, everything worked just fine. Meanwhile, her kids are just continuously staring at me like I'm the devil or something, and Karen's going off in the background about how she does not want the tree anymore, she wants a full refund because the tree is just too complicated. And Bill, being a suck up, decided to give her the whole refund, even though the tree was perfectly fine. Karen continued on out the door after leaving the tree, just assembled in the middle of the store saying that she was going to go to a different Steins with better customer service. This is why Karens need a day job. And yes, she took her kids with her. I almost thought she wouldn't take her kids. Another story, and this one is of a Debbie. The Karen mom who doesn't understand how stores work. They figure because they're older that they can have every single right given to them whenever they want it, wherever they are. I seen Debbie already skipping lines, complaining about her leg hurting after I had just watched her for an hour and a half run across the store three times trying to compare things, things that she wanted to buy. Now I know why she took three times of running across the store to get into line to skip someone, complain about her leg, and then come to me to buy something. I don't know why she picked my line, but it had to be my line. Now I've had experiences with Debbies in the past, and these Debbies all do the same thing and it just really irks me. Whenever they're in the store, especially this store, we have a lot of things that are very decorative, very rustic looking, something very unique, something different, something that Walmart usually doesn't have. It's a decoration store, it's a gift store, so we have a lot of things, including a lot of plants and a lot of glitter. Oh my god, the glitter. Things that are rustic look like they have been worn down. Things that are manufactured, more stylized, look like they're just built wrong. And Debbie believes the world is supposed to be perfect and not rustic or stylized. So this Debbie in particular had in her hands a little resin rabbit figurine. It was a cute little thing, but she comes up to me with it and I have actually priced these rabbits before so I know exactly what they are. But she continues to come up to me and says, this rabbit, oh, it's the cutest little thing. I found only one of them on this shelf and it said it was $12.99. Oh, little did I know that the tail was broken off of this little rabbit. I don't think $12.99 is exactly a good price. It's a little too expensive for a broken rabbit. I did find the tail though, it's right here, but it's still broken and I need a discount. Little did she know that I did price the rabbits. I actually stuck the price sticker on it 
and it was not on sale. It was $19.99 and all of them were perfectly fine when I put them on the shelf. Lord knows how the hell she broke the tail off of the rabbit, which I suspect she did, but I'll never know. But it was not found in that aisle. I didn't see her pick it up, but I honestly don't know how she got it into another aisle because I told her, look ma'am, right behind you, there's perfectly good rabbits that are actually intact on the shelf end right behind you. See, they're right over there. She didn't like that at all, the fact that I had pointed out that they were perfectly good figurine rabbits exactly like that one right behind her and she wouldn't have to deal with a broken one. She demanded that she see the manager and so I called the manager down and she yelled at the manager and long story short, Bill, the pushover, decided that she would go home with only paying five dollars for a broken rabbit, which I knew she would go home and just hot glue the tail right back on it later. After having a really hard time with the card reader and yelling at me the whole time as if it were my fault. Whatever, she went on about her merry way and I continued on with the store. Here's a story of a Frank actually when Frank walked in. Not to be confused with Debbie's son, Frank, but Debbie's husband, Frank. Frank Sr. They're both named Frank. He comes in already having a very pissy attitude. And the first thing he did when he came in was come up to me, I was the only person at the register again, and asked me where was the bathroom. So I pointed him in the direction of the bathroom, and he went to the bathroom. And so after he went to the bathroom, because he was the only customer for actually quite some time, and he was the first customer in, we all noticed that the toilet was clogged. Thanks, Frank. I don't know anybody else here who would actually have the audacity to just clog the toilet and leave it be. We actually had to call maintenance later because not even the technical guys here could figure it out. Thanks, Frank. So after about two hours of him shopping around, it finally started to become a little bit more busy in the store, which was good for the store, I guess. It had finally become busy in the store, so I I was actually headed over to a window register where I could take orders from outside because the other cashiers finally came to the front and took over the register that I was. Outside there's a lot of things. There's plants, there's little tree saplings that are about like maybe four feet tall or so in a pot all ready to go home. There's bushes, there's fruit trees, there's plants, there's big 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 pots outside that you can put the plants in so they can get really huge. And there's also people like Frank outside. Out there everything does actually have a sale tag. It says it right underneath where you pick up the plant, how much it is, if it's on sale or not. Frank somehow managed to pick up a tree, being about like 60 or 70 or 80 years old. I honestly don't remember how old he was. And he encounters a line because there's just, it's been busy. The city representatives themselves are actually coming to buy apple trees and bushes and mulch and rocks and stuff like that that they need for city decorations. Lord knows where. But after they had gotten done with their really large order, like $600 or something, so it took a while. All the tax exempt in the world. And then Frank comes moseying on up with his little wheelie cart, and on the cart is a tree. He said, I would like to buy this little tree for $40. I'm not sure where the hell he got the memo that trees can be $40, but they're not sold as $40 here. I mean, the city representatives just walked away with about like six trees or so, and that alone was about $600. The trees, I told him, are upwards of $100 because of the fact that they're already planted and you can just plant them in the ground and go. He didn't like that at all, so as I was going outside with my little book, it says what exactly to look for for which kind of tree, I looked around for a barcode, and there was no barcode. And I said, where did you get this tree? And he said, I don't know. I asked him how much is the tree, he said $40. I didn't believe that at all because I don't think any trees except for the really dying ones are actually $40. So I went looking, reading, looking, reading, and then he gets just mad. He's going, oh, this is taking too long. What's going on? Why can't I have this tree? I'm, it's only $40. I need to leave here with this tree. I have to go home. I have to hurry up and get home. This is taking too long. You're taking too long. This is a bunch of BS. It wouldn't have taken this long at a different Steins down the road. We need better customer service. Where is your manager? What's taking the nursery guys so long? They're the ones who know about the trees. Why aren't they by the trees? Well, maybe one of them was trying to unclog the toilet, Frank. So anyway, here comes the nursery guys. The nursery guys deal with the tree nursery. Nursery being they raise the trees, so they are 
tree experts. They know this tree manual a lot more than I do, so they take the manual and he's going off on them, going off on me, and going off on the tree itself, which honestly, maybe he had dementia or something. Either way, he was not happy with whatever was going on and he wanted us to hurry up. In my head, I'm thinking to myself, Frank, you are like retired? Where the hell do you have to go in a hurry? It's not like your kids are not probably 30 years old by now. You don't have to go home to your kids. And chances are you're not babysitting your grandchildren, otherwise you would have brought them with you. Or if you haven't brought them with you, your wife is probably at home watching them herself. If you don't have a wife, well then why'd you leave the grandkids at home? I genuinely did not see a reason for Frank to be upset what are you going to go do? Hurry up and go read a book? Are you going to go hurry up to go sip lemonade? Are you hurrying up because you have to go to the bathroom again? Either way, I genuinely didn't understand why he was rushing everyone, but it seems like every Frank Senior seems to be in a hurry to hurry up and wait. I don't get it. But either way, we did find out that it was an apple tree that he had lied about the price to because the price was right under there. Once we told Frank that it would be $140, he said, this and turned around and left. But he took his incredibly sweet time going to the car and driving slowly out of the parking lot as if he didn't have somewhere to go in the first place. Which I... I... Uh. Yeah, right, Frank. You totally had somewhere to go. So those are my experiences with Franks and Debbies and Karens and I didn't really talk about Frank Jr. because I just didn't have a story in my mind right now. But trust me, I have like a dozen stories because I worked there for nine months. Just about every day I've encountered either a Karen, a Debbie, or a Frank, or a Frank Jr. I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to do that. But because I have a dozen of these stories, if you did like this video, be sure to leave a like. Like it if you just had fun listening to me have a fit about Karen. And I guess go check out the subreddit. Leave a like if you'd like me to share more stories of my experiences in retail, including that one time that Debbie decided to drop something completely and ask for a discount again. If you happen to have any comments about the time that you've encountered a Karen, either as a working in retail person or someone who is just in the wrong line at the wrong time, leave a comment in the comments below and I'll be sure to feature your comment in the next video of this topic. And be sure to subscribe if you would like updates on whenever that video comes out. I'm Lady, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'll stop bothering you for now.